now. All right. Can you hear me now, too? All right. All right, y'all. Can you hear me now? They're making sure I can't see if who's watching. Here we go. Okay. Okay, they can hear me now. Okay, they can hear. So this is William James, and he uh, is the writer of the film. You go ahead and speak for yourself. Temptation, Temptation, Confession of a Marriage Counselor. I am the writer of that film. And so, basically, we wrote these films that they took, and our argument right now is we're in court and we don't like the fact that nobody is getting the sound went off sister but I was hearing it before who says they can't hear me I just heard somebody say the sound went off again I can hear you okay well we're going to keep rolling and if you tell me you can't hear me let me know so finally we got everything up and running and we're moving uh we had some questions and answers and some information they did the same thing with his case william james and they took his movie and he also was uh defaulted they defaulted on him too now you know when people default in court they got to pay you everything they owe you and so his case, we didn't discover this until we met each other. And how we met each other is I got so disgusted when my second case had that, uh, what do they call it? They called the collateral estoppel. We started looking into how we could bring the case back. And one of the things my husband, Emmanuel Tucker, brought out was that it was a RICO case because these guys had predicate acts of the same issues. Like they continue to do the same things to people over and over again. He said, we needed to find out how much. Well, when we found out how much, we found out Oprah Winfrey had 94 cases against her, stating people had lost uh, their works and she duplicated their works over and over again. And Tyler Perry had 18. So what we did was we filed a civil RICO. And this is how it all started. We decided that copyright infringement was not the right avenue. You hear about all these copyright infringement cases? William James, you want to tell them a little bit about what we found out about copyright infringement? Well, we realized that copyright infringement is a small, it's kind of a small area to accuse someone of copyright infringement. So the, the area is so small, uh, basically it has to be word for word. If it's not word for word, then it's not considered copyright infringement. So what we did was we had to come up with another remedy in law. Basically, we started researching the law, the federal law, um, and actually Terry's husband came up with the RICO Act. So we kind of investigated the RICO Act. We looked up all the laws that was involved, and we realized that this is what we need to file. So once we file, actually we had them in a panic because I guess uh, every case they really have, they really never fought it. They always got it dismissed on a technicality. And the technicality is uh, basically is when you uh, <clears throat> maybe don't do something right, you know, and they get it dismissed. So Terry and I and her husband, we started just basically searching the law. And that's what they tried to do to this case, the same thing, like they always try to do, get it dismissed on the technicality, but it didn't work because we already knew that. We, we said that definitely in the beginning of the case that we was going, they was going to try to get it dismissed on the technicality. And so what we realized was we weren't fighting this case just against them. We was fighting the judge as well, you know, because a lot of times these famous billionaires have money to pay off people. And when they start paying people off, uh, everybody just jump on board and, and want money, you know. So you can finish from that, Terry. So we got disgusted on this case because not only did they default again in this case, they defaulted for $2.5 billion. 
and they should be in default right now. But the judge put himself in the case. He started doing stuff for them to try to help them out because he realized that it was just two pro se litigants fighting against Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey and their attorneys. Well, we are up to 156 on the docket of the district court since April 3rd of 2017. And we have them for fraud, against, fraud upon the court, which means officers of the court are committing fraud on the record. We have them on multiple counts of uh, violating different things such as their certificate of interested person. Well, while in the middle of this case, Oprah Winfrey ups and decides to sell 25% of own to her already partner that she did not report on this case. And the reason why- Which is illegal. That is illegal because you have to make sure the judge don't own any stock in your particular, you know, uh, company before he works on your case. Well, another thing that he did was illegal was he allowed them to choose their judge by name. Don't nobody, that's like a bunch of drug dealers standing on the corner. They know Joe Schmo judge over there lets everybody off with a slap on the wrist and everybody goes to court saying, I want Judge Joe Schmo. I want Judge Joe Schmo. Well, that's what Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Berry did. They went on the record, put the judge's name on the record and said, we already had a, a judge, by the way, who was already working on the case and doing what he do. And they said, well, we want this judge so we like, okay, so we know this judge had to have been paid to take the case. Well, lo and behold, we found out some more information. We found out that this particular judge had been bankrupt four times in the last few years. And we saying, oh, come on now, if it's not evident this man took a, a payoff or a bribe, why is the news and the media not touching this case? We like, why? Well, we just got through seeing something where Oprah on there talking about she gonna run for president. Are you kidding me? This her third RICO case that she got and don't nobody know about it. This is the third time that she been running around doing all kind of mess and sitting around talking about all the women in the world, boo hoo hoo, who's standing up for injustice, who's standing up against crime. Chick, you committing more crime than anybody I know, and you doing it against your own people. Really? Right. Right. What do you do? I mean, it's like when you get to a certain billionaire status, all you know is that you can get on TV and you can control the masses by what you say and do, and don't nobody else get a word in edgewise. One of the women they stole from was a lawyer. Her name was Strickland, Lisa Strickland or something. She was from Mississippi. She didn't even know the chick was a lawyer. And she's the one that did Ayana Fix My Life. She got her money, though. And we got it on the record. So it's like all this stuff is documented and it's real. And you yeah. heard about Monique. You heard about how Monique was like Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey blacklisted her. We talked to his attorney, her attorney in Chicago, and she was scared to touch it because she did all this ranting and raving. But at the end of the day, he hit her off with something for messing her up and blacklisting her career. What? One of the and things you, guys, you don't realize is, huh? No, I was saying you guys got to realize these are our black entertainers at the top of at the top of the entertainment business. They are the people that we look up to, basically, and. When you see them doing things like that, uh, you're trying to get them to help you out, you know, to get to read your screenplay or your book or even some of your music, you know. Uh, they steals it without even blinking an eye. And when you, then you, you have no other avenue other than black entertainment, you know, so. And once you get, once you get in the news, what you sued, Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey, ain't nobody gonna touch your work. You blacklisted automatically. You can forget about a career in this industry because everybody thinks they're such a pillar. They think that they're so, you know, renowned that they are above reproach and that they would never be out here doing stuff like that. And that's all they do. But they go after the low people on the totem pole. Number one, they're using law that they know can't nobody fight, which is copyright infringement. It's called counterfeit. 
The only way you can file somebody stealing your work, and we letting y'all all know this, the only way you can file, it's not copyright infringement, if you give somebody a song, music, or anything, unless they play it over with your voice, your music in exact same arrangement, or they steal your book cover for cover the exact same way like the bootleggers do, where they take your cover, they make a new cover, they slip it in the black box, they make a DVD copy of the film and they stick it in there. That's copyright infringement. And we sitting here fighting the wrong doggone laws. We was trying to fight copyright infringement when we supposed to be fighting counterfeit and plagiarism. And everybody that goes into court with these lawyers, these lawyers know that that is not co copyright infringement. And everybody runs into court talking about I'm filing a copyright infringement case and they lose it. Talking about, oh, it's not the same. No, it's not the same. We agree. It's rearranged. It's remixed. It's recut and edited. You take and combine two or three characters. You pull this one out of there. It's a counterfeit. It's like a bad $100 bill that you know you're trying to spend in the store that don't have George Washington or or actually it has George Washington on your hundred dollar bill instead of Ben Franklin and all these other people for your 50 and your hundreds. So what I'm trying to tell you is you cannot sue nobody under copyright infringement. And so we did that. We made that huge mistake and now we're trying to right our wrongs. But what's happening is the legal system's jumping in and they're taking up for them and they're trying to help them. And so Tell we have. Tell them to your attorney. Tell oh, them to your attorney. My attorney said he was threatened. He said he was threatened. And I knew this from the beginning of my other case, which I had no idea about. And um, I have the emails that I put into the district court. His attorney had to be threatened. He quit after having a phone conference with Tyler Perry and them attorneys. And next thing you know, he never came back to court. And what happened to your attorney, Bill? Well, my first attorney, um, he told me that, that we got a good case and we, we, we was going to win. And a week after that, he quit. I don't know if the man got threatened. I don't know what happened, but after him speaking with Tyler Perry's attorney, he quit. Then my second attorney that, I, that I've got, this man, he went to court for me. He pleaded my case in front of the judge. And after that, I never heard from the man again. So I filed a grievance against him and they suspended him for uh, 18 months. And this was back in uh, 2013, 2014. So actually he hasn't studied law since. So, and when I called, they told me that he has to answer my charges before he can be working as an attorney again. So those are the two attorneys that I'm not going to mention their names, but those guys, uh, I believe either they took a bribe or they got threatened or something happened. They had to. Something big happened. So now here we are. We're waiting for a motion for reconsideration based on a writ for mandamus, which is something that enforces the judge to do the duties of his office and the oath of his office because he's not performing the duties of his office. And um, we also have a real appeal in, a big one. And that one, on the ninth, we get to argue everything that we need to argue based on the fact that they've been in default, the fact that the judge has not even made them fight for, uh, I'm sorry, Manny, what you saying? Okay, because I lost my frame of thought when you was talking to me. Okay, so. The judge had, had, had made them fought the RICO case. And they uh, come up with another trumped up charge uh, that we haven't even inserted. Right here. So basically, not only that, but they haven't allowed us to talk about the things that we were supposed to talk about in the court or answer the, the different motions before the judge made rulings on stuff. I mean, he's been violating the law in the district court in every which way you can possibly violate the law. And now this woman's talking about running for 2020.
she's talking about what people shouldn't be doing. But she's doing it. I don't understand it. We lost William James. Trying to get him back. We're trying to get him back. I don't really know what happened. Okay. All right. So anyway, yes, the court is in Atlanta. And so we are in the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals, and we're also in the lower district court. The case hasn't been dismissed. They try to dismiss all the witnesses, but they're going to have to bring them all back because there's so many laws that's been broken on this case. I mean, I don't even know how to go into all of the legalities of it, but we're not going to a trial. So now we're going to start talking about it a lot and we're going to start working on getting media involved and everything because before this case gets thrown out, we don't want them to think that there's no coverage on it so they can make a bad decision and we have to end up going to the Supreme Court. We don't want to do that. We're trying to go ahead and make them do what they're supposed to do. And if they do what they're supposed to do, they have to pay us $2.5 billion right now. I kid you not, they are in default for $2.5 billion. They never even answered the charges as they pertain to RICO. They never even answered why they have defaulted in multiple cases against multiple plaintiffs. And all of these plaintiffs, they so poor, some of them, they wrote by hand to the district court to, to create their lawsuits. Some of them were so poor, they filed for like indigency and um, they have another name for it, but I'm going to call it by the name that most people know, indigency, uh, so that they can get the courts to help them pay for the filing fees. And nobody wanted to help them with their filing fees. So the cases got thrown out and they were told if you can bring the case back by the time it's thrown out, then you can, you know, possibly look at uh, bringing the case back, but if they run out of the statute of limitations, there's nothing they can do. Well, I mean, we also found out we have another remedy at law with the state court because they did interstate commerce and they moved our product from state to state across state lines and across United States. I mean, uh, not United States, international lines because they took it overseas. And so we're also looking at trying to get it on like that into the, the district court of the from the uh, state court. But um, right now we're in good standings. We look like we, we really on top of our game. We're really about to make this thing happen. $2.5 billion is a lot of money. So we need to start going on out there and letting people know what's going on because when people have to pay that kind of money, the, all of a sudden you start seeing money shifting and moving around. And one of the things we didn't like was the simple fact that she quickly sold a 25% controlling interest of own to David Zalusk. And David Zalusk is the guy that owns Discovery Communications. Discovery Communications is a stock market ticker, D-I-S-C-A. And D-I-S-C-A owns Discovery Channel, the Science Channel, I mean, the TLC channel to include the Oprah Winfrey Network. And so when she sold that extra controlling interest in the Oprah Winfrey Network to that particular guy, it was for a time period until 2025 or something like that. That goes to show you she's in the process of trying to either hide her assets or get away from assets that she feel like is going to come back to haunt her because she's in the process of trying to run for presidency. And there's no way in the world, I love my black people. I love, I stand for anything that's right. 
but I'm not standing up for somebody that hurts so many people and pretends like they don't know what's going on. Don't sit up here talking about all, all you women who are fighting for your rights, that are fighting to stand up for what's right. Um, how she deployed that little that, that little thing that's circulating on the internet since last night for the Golden Globe Awards is like really embarrassing to me because you have hurt so many young black women, including they've been accused of Rico with the uh, Indian tribes. From what we understand, you know, there's been experimentation being done for some of their companies and some Indian folks are claiming, you know, they are claiming that their family members are going missing by the way of some of the people we've mentioned today. And um, they were not allowed to uh, force them to give back their family's remains. They had to give back the keys to the um, reservations, the Indian reservations that they took the keys from. That's the only thing the judge could order them to give back. And this is a recent RICO case. So nobody's above reproach. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's so holy and then vowed that they're not capable. The saddest thing about this is this has been going on for 30 years of this woman's career. You heard the stories about how the Harpo employees complained that she was a monster. You, and we've been trying to get the media's attention, Edward. I don't know what's going on, but she just thanked the media in that Golden Globes Award. She was like, oh, I love the media. Thank you. The media is the best thing that ever happened because the media is not reporting the stuff against them. They are paying the media off. But you got to understand, NBC is owned by her partner under DISCA. NBC is a part ownership for this guy that's this billion billionaire. So when they're sitting at the round of robin table with people like that, and you got that much money, you know what? Me and William James was doing a calculation with my husband, Emmanuel Tucker, and we was adding up the money in Hollywood, like all the black celebrities, Will Smith, Bill Cosby, like all of the females, Taraji Henson, everybody, all, you know, Lorenz Tate, everybody, la dee -daddy, Gabrielle Union, all of them. We added up all of their money for what they reporting for their net worth, and it fits in the back pocket of Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry. The billions of dollars that these guys have can't touch the money that all of Black Hollywood has combined. I don't know what that is. That's Bill Gates' power. That's serious power. That's the kind of money that you don't want to mess with. And as soon as they think this case is over, they think they're going to mess with children of God. I don't think so. You better learn who you dealing with. Because we like them ones like David with the slingshot and the giant. We're not going to stop and we're not going to play with y'all. And we're not going to feel like we threaten or afraid of you to speak out. We're going to come against you guys until you stop hurting people. And you apologize for what you've done to all of these people. And you give something back to exactly. all of these people that you hurt and then sitting around talking about god and spiritual this and spiritual that i mean come on the first thing people do when they doing wrong is hide behind religion it's the worst thing in the world we don't know what's going on behind their closed doors we don't know how they really living or what they're doing we need to stop looking at these fictional characters on tv and assuming they are who the people think they really are but all we know, Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry, well, we know for a fact that Tyler Perry is a corporation. We know that his real name is Emmett Perry. We know that that's not him. We've already had to put all his real names and aliases down on this lawsuit. Because he got so many names. So when you suing, suing Tyler Perry, all you're doing is suing a, a brand. You ain't even suing the individual Emmett Perry Jr. Sure. So it's just it's so much to this and it's so deep and the average person can't comprehend because it consumes the better part of our days and our nights. We spend nights, weekends, holidays. We spend so much time on this computer, so much time doing court cases and dealing with their attorneys is not even funny. And most people wouldn't even know it. That's right. As a matter of fact, 
one of his attorneys said, I don't care which way this thing goes. Where did you get? I was like, I don't have a law degree. And he was like, well, I don't care. Whichever way this thing goes, I'd like you to come work for my law firm when this is all over with. No. What did he say? What did he say? Uh, you guys sure come up with some good law. You call, Yeah, that was the last time we spoke to him. You all come with some good law. We know you got some more good law coming. But it's like you're making fun of us. You're making fun of us because what you're basically doing is you're patronizing us. You're telling you? us, oh, yeah, we know you got this, but we got something bigger than you. We got money. Right. And we have penned out letters, Edward McCoy, to get the media. I mean, we have written over the last 11 months or 10 months, how many different media sites? Every oh, major right. news network, every major television network, every we got two radio shows. One major one in Chicago where William James is at and one here in Atlanta. And that was it. We get no coverage whatsoever. They block in the media like X'd out. So we're going to get on live. We're going to record these videos. We're going to share them. We're going to put them on YouTube and we're not going to stop. So somebody hear right. it and pick it up. Because that's our work out there. When y'all go to the show and look at them films, we are the people that write those things, write those movies. And the only reason why we've been scared to speak out is because we've been scared for mistrials, like I said. Right. And I have 25 more screenplays that I want to get out there. And I'm sure Terry has some too, but right sure. now we're being blackballed in the system and it's hard for us to get our work out there. Very hard. <laughs> So we got to put together a new plan and it's going to be social media. And we're going to continually have these discussions, these round and robin round table discussions on live and everywhere we go. Yeah. So we are keep, we're going to keep fighting because that's our money. And the fact that they're in default for $2.5 billion, we're not letting that go. We're not letting that go from nobody. Cause guess what? You know, what's so funny. I think it was last night or the night before last. I just watched with my husband trading places and me and Bill James said, watch us trade places with William, uh, William James would be Tyler Perry's place. And I'm going to take Oprah's. I ain't playing $2.5 billion is a lot of money. Lot Don't of nobody want to pay that. And that's what they're going to have to pay us right now. Yep. Well, that's what they owe us. That's what they owe us on the lawsuit. Ask us how they owe us this money. That's a lot of money, right? Well, see, with RICO, everything is treble charges. So if someone owes you $100, a treble charge means you get paid three times. It says, look at TMZ. Her mind is changing, and it may be due to what you're saying. You never know. We will have to take a look at TMZ. We um, TMZ says they have our file on their desk. How we said told my husband he knows what's going on with our case before we know, and I would love to know what that means. But they're not reporting it. They haven't been ordered. It was entered by the clerk of the court. The default judgment went in against Lionsgate, Tyler Perry, and Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey Network. Harpo, who owns Oprah Winfrey Network, Tyler Perry Studios, and Tyler Perry Company, and Barbara Hunt. Those are what the charges went in against them. While they was in default, they never had to show excusable neglect. Excusable neglect is why they were late with responding to the charges. And then, not only did they not respond on time, they never answered the charges. We, ha we hit them with the Sherman Act, which is a monopoly. And, the, and they were in a monopoly. He signed an exclusive deal to own to where all his TV shows can be on the exclusively. Well, a law was passed with the RKO Theaters, Paramount Theaters, years ago that says you are not allowed to create a monopoly. That means film houses that create the films were not allowed to have theaters and only show their stuff on their theaters or in their theaters. They were supposed to open it up 
to the rest of the market, other filmmakers. Well, that is what Tyler Perry was doing. Only Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey stuff was showing in her primetime TV show slots. And so we accused them of that Sherman Act, creating that monopoly. They broke up the monopoly. All of a sudden, during this case, Tyler Perry signs a Viacom deal and they break off the deal with Oprah Winfrey's network. Now, you cannot tell me that's not attributed to the case that we filed against them. Yep. That we had everything to do with it. All of a sudden, Lionsgate stopped being her distributor, and now you see Warner Brothers up there as a distributor. And and y'all don't even realize they they are tapping our phones. They are uh, doing a whole lot of things of that nature to see what we're talking about, to see what we're writing. Oh, and some strange stuff has happened to us, too. Some dangerous stuff that we've been dealing with. When I go down to the courts in Atlanta, and this is before I knew my way around Atlanta real good because I just got here when we filed that case. My GPS kept routing me to Tyler Perry Studios in downtown Atlanta. And I could not get my GPS to stop sending me to his studios. I would delete everything, put my home address in, and it would still take me in circles right back to Tyler Perry Studios. Yeah. The night he got home from Atlanta, he was here with me and my husband. William James was here with me and my husband here in Atlanta before we filed the case, the night we filed the case. And by the time he got back home, somebody had shot in his window, and he lives in a very nice house in Chicago, a very rural part where it's like all nice home associations. So it wasn't like no gangster ghetto stuff where people just be shooting in the streets. And all kinds of other stuff happened, like a fake alarm company person came knocking at my door talking about they like access into my house to take a look at my alarm. I ain't call no alarm company. I didn't, and all of a sudden, all my cameras around my house stopped working. And now all of a sudden, when you call my alarm company, they got a new policy that says if you are unsure about the worker coming to your house, go on to their website and you can look at the badge number and the picture and the name of the person that's servicing your alarm. You forget billions of dollars. People hurt each other on the streets for less. Yes. And you got to ask yourself, what would you do to protect your billions? What would you do to protect your billions? Yep. Those billions are our billions. We're going to get it. We're going to take them. We're going to get it. And it's not taken by force. It's taken by law because the law stands on our side. We have used very good Supreme Court law. We've used very good appellate court law. And we have done the proper standards for review. And we are showing where the law is on our side on everything that we're saying. To include the judge failed to recuse himself. Under 28 UC, USC 455, if there's anything that says that he could possibly be prejudiced on the case, he is supposed to recuse himself by law. This man refuses to get off the case. Now he's a defendant. Now we added him as a defendant. He's the chief judge. I mean, this thing is just out of control. It's tiring. It's worrisome. They keep saying they want to wait and see what's going on with the appeal before they talk about negotiations for a settlement. And we're like, what makes you think we're going to settle? After that point. After we that. Might just go for, right. We might just go for the $2.5 billion. There, we're Why do we, there we go. Why we want to settle with you when you, after you sat back and made us work this hard, why should we sit up here and negotiate with you? For less than what we can get. Yeah. Yes. Yep. But it says, and look at why... TMZ. Her mind is changing. Paulette Cunningham, I wish you would give me some clarity on that because that's interesting. We always looking for the information that's out there because we have to see how they move. Because how they move is very important because how they move is telling us what their next move is going to be, or if we are having an effect and a cause on their life in any way. Right. And I know that Tyler Perry been watching me for years, and I've been wanting to say this forever. This man has put Terry in every film since he stole my film. 
It's as if to say, I got your name, I got your film, and there's nothing you can do about it. I'm letting you know in your face, behind your back, that I'm taking what's yours. I mean, it's just all of these little innuendos that's been thrown out there. Right, and, and he tells you there's nothing you can do about it because he got the millions, he got the billions, and he got lawyers and big, big, big lawyers behind him. And he let you know, and if you do try to get an attorney, I'm going to buy him too. Exactly. And well, too many people have been bought in these cases. And so now we at the point where we got to do what we got to do. Yep. And so we're going to keep plugging this into all kinds of media. We're going to keep trying to make, you know, our um, case heard. No, we don't have legal counsel. All the legal counsels keep taking, they keep taking, they're afraid of Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey. These are billionaires. And the hours that it takes us to do legal arguments for all of these cases and the research is out of control because you got to understand federal court. It's no joke. It took us a lot of trial and error to really understand how to even just write one motion for an argument and how to stay on topic, how to use case law, how to find statute law, how to use controlling law. And when an attorney doesn't have a whole lot of money that you putting up front, Edward, what they do is they're like, you know, unless you got a couple million in stacks like that to sit on my thing so that I don't take nobody else's case but yours, I can't mess with you. Or unless they super rich and they got some extra yuppies in the corner that graduated high school or Harvard, I'm not going to say high school, Harvard, some paralegals that they can use to sit down and do the legal research. Nobody's jumping in on this, especially not no pro bono, some commission work or work based on, you know, no way. And we don't have millions to hand nobody. And it's just the truth. It's serious. And we're doing a good job, though. We're doing oh, an yeah, excellent we are. job. I mean, if you see, if y'all go to case 17-1181-TWT, you will see the legal standards in which we write. You will say there's no, and matter of fact, we have some big time lawyers. We have friends who are on Facebook that could be watching right now that gave us some wonderful legal counsel. And we contacted those legal counsels. And when they read our motions that we was filing, they said, what you want me to do? I couldn't write that better myself. As a matter of fact, I don't know if I could write it this good. What would you want me to do? Because I really don't even know this like you. I would be embarrassed and try to write for you if you, someone that writes like this, is looking over my shoulder. Yep. And everything that come up, we find the law. We find a law to counteract it, contradict it, prove that they ain't on topic. They don't even know what they're talking about or whatever. And these are big law firms. One of the law firms represents a lot of big wigs like Beyonce and Jay-Z and Rihanna. And we, we kicking them to sleep with law. I'm telling you, at the end of this case, we're going to have all them people wanting us to represent them. And we ain't even got law degrees. They're going to give us an honorary I'm just, I'm trying to tell you that's how serious it is. But the problem is the illegalities of it. It's the way we're being railroaded. And I think even an attorney would be railroaded because we were told that Georgia has some of the most corrupt legal systems out here. We read this, we saw this, and we've been told this, that even lawyers are like, I'm scared to mess with them. You need to get that transferred to another state. Yeah. And it's hard to do. We'd love to get it transferred to another state, but to find a state that doesn't have corruption, it's almost near next to none. Because we know New York is corrupt. And the reason why we know New York is corrupt is because my lawyer already sent it to a William Pauley and Pauley let him do all of that business that they did. They sat there and knew the case was in default and gonna still act like they got an open case to argue. Never got one piece of my evidence on the record. A case already defaulted to New York. Right. Come on. And look at Chicago. That's why, that's why we decided to fight the case ourselves. 
Now they got us listed as attorney generals, acting attorney generals. Because yes, we, we are listed are, as attorney generals. Yeah. Yep. We are the only only people that can bring those charges against the judge. Now, if we if we had had an attorney at this point of our case, it would have been dismissed a long time ago because attorney he's not going to uh, go up against a judge. He's afraid to go up against a judge. Most attorneys are. Why? You know so, why? Right? Huh? Because all lawyers get barred. They get disbarred for filing against a judge. It is illegal for an attorney to get a judge and accuse him of anything. So we are in the best position in the world to bring charges against the judge. And now yep. that we've just added motive, document one, what was it, 156? We added motive, finding That's out the so. judge had been yeah, it was document 156. We um had we found four different bankruptcies that the judge had over a period of time up until 2008. He ain't had no more since 2008 because he taking money from people like Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey. He ain't got to. He ain't got to be in deep. He, he ain't got to be in deep debt no more. Right. And not only that, not only that, the judge has been accused of a crime for the last 13 years every year. But Every matter of fact, year. 37 is 37, 38 cases against them. Right. That, and that's, you can average it out to two or three, two or three cases a year. <laughs> the same yeah. judge that's a defendant. He said, Edward McCoy said, but who is hearing these motions? The same judge that's supposed to be recused, the same judge that's a defendant. The same judge that's not supposed to be talking on the record. The same judge that has four bankruptcies. The same judge that is illegally allowing them to be out of default. The same judge that's committing fraud on the record because he's allowing the clerks of the court to write anything they want on the motions we filing. And then we have to call and correct the record and bring things back. I mean, it's serious. They are I mean, same charges. Several charges. This judge is so corrupt, it's not even funny. So what we're looking at now is we don't even know what we would charge the judge with. He's just a defendant. He's aiding and abetting. Rico. Right. They, they put a charge on us. Say we filed a 1292B. No way in there we filed a 1292B. We filed a fraud we, on the court. We actually have a judicial complaint against the judge. A judicial complaint means we've gone higher We've gone as high as we can go against that particular judge, and he's under investigation. And the only reason why I'm comfortable talking about it is because of one of his cronies, one of his clerks in the 11th Court of Appeals saw our judicial complaint document that we were slipping to the clerk of the court when we had to file another motion. And we noticed she already reported it down to him that he was under judicial complaint and being investigated. But he should have been removed himself because it's the law. It's the Supreme Court law. The law of the land, the U.S. Supreme Court. He's not even supposed to be on the, the case anymore. But he took them people's money, and he got to make sure he see the job all the way through. And at this point, we don't know what's going on with the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. So now we don't know if they're trying to buy them people. Because it's funny how the, the, the pizza shop called Slice is across the street from the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals. And it's the pizza shop in which Tyler Perry used in the movie Good Deeds that he stole from me in the scene where he took the little girl and the mother out for pizza and she playing video games up in there. Come to find out, and the street ain't but this big. You stand outside of Slice, so who eats in Slice? All of the judges, the appeals court judges. This thing is so deep and so dark and so wide, like my lawyer told me that we got on tape. I'm telling you, it's no joke. It's no joke. But when you sit in a billion dollars, it's nothing you can't buy. It's nobody you can't buy. And it's nobody that's above reproach. I'm just trying to tell you. The only thing, I mean, they done bought the media. A story like this should have been in the media for a long time. A story like yeah, this should have yeah. been. You should have been hearing about this being slammed across the United States because of how deep 
it is and how much stuff we brought out about them. How many cases we brought out about them? This case should have been cases. over. This should have been over a long been, time ago. We should have been sitting and on our money right now. Right. When we filed our complaint, it should have been over. Because they never answered the charges. We had them in default for a long time. And then they had to switch judges for them to get out of default. So they cheated right there. Because the other judge refused to pull them out of default. So we, we believe that they, by him being the chief judge, snatched him off the case. Because we accidentally got sent a file that said that, uh, right. we accidentally got sent a file that said that he told them no, that he wasn't going to leave the case. That's right. <laughs> yeah. They accidentally gave us a certified record. And they put us, they, they clo he closed the case and put a judgment against us. And then within a couple of hours, the case reopened and they said, closed as a judgment in error. The case is now reopened. He gave his final argument on the record. He, he gave his final uh, orders and they made him reopen it. So we yeah. know that he's under default. I mean, that he's that he's under investigation. We know somebody. Now you could say it was reopened because they got a counterclaim, but that counterclaim don't mean nothing because when you have an appeal in and an interlocutory appeal, it has to be heard by the appeals court before they can decide anything because they have to make sure that the appeals court is not going to remand and reverse it. Cause allow we need to we need to do both. Shoot. No, but we're gonna keep it legal, and right. um, we just need the we need the court we need the the media to get involved. We need people in the media that's willing to tell a story because we want to sit down and tell people. I mean, it's that serious. One hundred and fifty six, you know, one hundred and fifty six motions on a record in a district court from April third to December. That's like five, six, seven years worth of legal argument that we did in an eight month period. That is right. serious. Exactly. They will try to kill your credibility by stopping anyone of note to talk about this. All you need is one person like, help me Howard or someone like that. What about Larry King? We contacted their news desk. I don't know if the people that's below them is blocking us from talking to those people. But like, we want to talk to anybody that will talk to us. We'll talk to nobody. We'll talk to nobody. We don't care if nobody was watching right now on Facebook Live. We're going to talk to nobody. We want to talk about this to the high heavens and to the low, to lowest parts of the earth. We want to get this known. We want to get this out there. And we want people to start looking at this case and looking at it seriously because there's a lot of crime that's been committed by people that's trying to run for president now. You know, you don't want a president like that because that ain't no different than when everybody got mad because Obama didn't do nothing for his own people. And people got mad like, oh, well, I thought you were going to do a little bit more for us. So people got disappointed. Well, she's already there. She's already taken from us, stealing from us, built a whole empire on our backs, right in our face. And don't nobody know about it because she's a queen at the media. She put herself and her money into everybody who is media oriented and that's why the number one person at the golden globe she wanted to thank was the media because those are the people that's keeping her dirty laundry out the air but when yes, you yes. say 94 people over 30 years it's only okay it's not like it's 90 years so you talking about three major cases a year And even if it wasn't every year, you're talking three to five cases every year. And we talking about notable stuff that she has done that people are claiming wasn't hers. You see that Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey just had to pay them people for the have-nots because they didn't even know that the, the person that they was coming against was part of an entertainment media corporation, which owned a film company. And then you got to look at the corruption that's going on here in Atlanta. When we filed our case and we submitted it and we talked to the prosecutor's office, 
All of a sudden, the mayor's office went into uh, investigation. Remember that, Bill? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Lee Daniels also said Tyler Perry tried to steal his movie, too. Tried to take his movie, oh, uh, Empire. You remember that? Yep. Mm -hmm. There's too many elements of Empire that fits into my life anyway. I just I think that Tyler Perry, because he's been watching my life for so long, he's been stealing from me so long, he has been trying to laugh in my face about what he's doing. And the reason why he's doing that is because he's showing me that no matter what I do, he can pull every stop to do it in my face and show me how he can take anything of mine that belongs to me. Yep, so we need you guys to help this go viral. My phone about to die. We've been on here for about an hour. So, Please, I... cousin. Do yes, and we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep doing this, y'all. We're just letting you know this ain't the end of this. We got to keep this going. And if you could share this video, we're asking you to share it. We're going to try to pull it down and get it on YouTube. We're going to do what we can do. And um, we're just hoping that people really help us get this out to the media. We're going to get this to anybody that wants to listen. We're not going to stop making these videos. Love y'all. All right, you guys. Take care of yourself now. Take care of your family.